Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Economics. And of course today we are going to look at the theory of value. Okay, the water diamond paradox. It's a very very interesting theory and the water diamond paradox is a very very wonderful uh, explanation of what of how we value things. Okay, do not forget that these tutorials, these episodes are brought to you by the O3 Schools Jam CBT practice application. If you want to pass your jam exam at once, please download the application and start practicing your way to success. All right, we'll talk about the app as we continue. But first of all, let us quickly look at the theory of value. The theory of value. Okay, so um, what does the theory of value, first of all, tell us? What does it explain to us? And as you can see very evidently, the theory of value in economics explains how. It explains how, not only how, but also why goods and services acquire their worth. Okay? What do you mean by how and why goods and services acquire their worth? I'm saying how what goods and services are what are priced. Okay? How you say, how you can say as uh, one yam is 500 naira and one tomato is 10 naira. Okay? How you can say one bag of rice is 150 and why you can say one bag of beans is 100,000. Okay? How and why goods and services acquire their value? Why they acquire their worth? Okay? It's what uh, the theory of value is what it's all about. That's what it explains to us. Okay? So now, I'll give a very, very wonderful uh, analogy using the water diamond paradox. Okay? But before then, the paradox, the paradox explains that water which is very important to man. You know how important water is. If you do not drink water, that means you, you want to just die. Okay? So you must drink water even if you don't eat. Only water is enough to sustain you. Okay? To sustain you if you do not eat. But you see, you see, if you refuse to take water, okay, you are, you are, you are aiming to want to kill yourself. Okay? So the paradox explains that water, which is very important to man, commands little or no price, okay? You can almost get water everywhere, okay? So that's some, if the, the most expensive water should not be, should not be more than in, in Nigeria right now, okay? Let's say it's, uh, we have Ever Water, we have Nessu, we have different brands of water, we have Aquafina, okay? Different brands of water, of water. but the most expensive one, for one on the street, oh, not, I'm not talking about in an expensive hotel, even in an expensive hotel, okay, let us say it's not up to 5,000 Naira, okay, or 10,000 Naira for one water. Let us even say it's even 10,000 Naira. It's not that expensive. But water is very, very important to man, okay? So water, which is very important to man, commands little or no price, okay? Why diamond, which is of less importance, you can live your life from the beginning, from the day you were born to maybe when you have lived 150 years and you are about to die, okay, without having a diamond and you will live your life successfully. Successfully, you can live your life without diamond. So diamond is of less importance. Gold is of less importance. Okay, anything of what, of values of the most expensive car is of less importance. All those things will not even matter. We know matter at the point, okay? So the most expensive thing in the world will be of less what importance to what to us, okay? But we it commands what more value, okay? So commands little no water commands little or no price, but diamond, which is of what less importance to man, commands a higher price. It commands a very, very, very high price. Okay, so that is what the paradox is talking about. So now I'll give you an analogy. Let's say, for example, you are in a competition, for example, all right, you are in a competition, and then the prize for the winner, the prize for a winner is between what? One, a bottle of water, a bottle of water, okay, then number two, a diamond. Okay, so now this is the price for the winner and you are free to make a choice after winning. Okay, follow the story jelly. all right? So you are in the competition, all right? And the winner has a choice to make between a bottle of water and a diamond. Okay, let's say it's even a fighting competition, all right? Where people will have to kick down safe and have injuries, all right? So now, after you have gone through all that and then you now won, which, which will you choose? Will you choose a bottle of water as a prize 
or a diamond, okay? You will choose what? Let me give you one second to think about it. Will you choose a diamond or a bottle of water? Definitely, you choose what? A diamond. Because diamond is what? More expensive, okay? It is more expensive. You can get water anywhere. Even while we're fighting self, they'll be giving you water to drink, <laughs> you get? But you cannot win that kind of battle and then go and choose water as your prize. One bottle of water as a prize. Okay? You will want to what? Pick what? A diamond. All right? So, it is normal. Okay, now, Let's say, imagine a situation again where you are in the desert. You are in a desert, a very, very dry desert. You have been trying to find your way out of the desert for days. You are very tasty. You are very well tasty. Okay, you are very, very tasty. Okay, you need water. I'm looking for, you are looking for water everywhere. And then, suddenly, suddenly, you saw a bottle of water and you saw a diamond, okay? And then you are in a position to choose. Someone offered you a choice. You say, this is, this is a diamond, this is water. Which one will you choose, okay? So now, if you are in that condition, if you are in that situation, which of the two will you choose? Will you choose a bottle of water or a diamond, okay? You will not choose a diamond in this condition again, okay? You will not choose a diamond because you can live <laughs> without the diamond, all right? But you will choose water. Because you are very, very tasty. You are very, very tasty. And you are in a desert where you do not even know where you, whether you ever find water in that desert. Okay? So if someone presents you that choice, you will pick what water. You, put, you will pick what a bottle of, what, of water. All right? So now, that is what the water diamond paradox is telling us about. Okay? Depending on the situation, all right, you can what? You can, you can perceive or value. There are so many interpretations to the... Uh, to the theory of value. So many, many interpretations. There's one by Adam Smith. Let us look at some of those uh, interpretations that we have. Number one, we have the labor theory of value. The labor theory of value. Number one, let's look at the labor theory of value. Labor theory of value. This labor theory of value tells us that the value of a good that the value of a good, okay, is determined by the amount, by the amount of labor required to produce it. Okay, so this is what the labor theory of value. Okay, the labor theory of value is telling us that the value of a good, if you want to know how valuable a good is, okay, that is the labor theory, it's one interpretation of the theory of value. Okay, this is the labor theory of value. That if you want to know how valuable a good is, okay, what do you do? Right, you what is it's, it is what determined by the amount of labor. That is required to produce that thing. Okay, let's say for this marker, for example, if you want to know the value of this marker, look at the amount of labor or the amount of, let's say in this case, machines. You know, there, there's a plastic here, there's, there, there is ink. Okay, there are so many materials in this to make what this, this marker. Okay, so now that is what the labor theory of value is telling us. Okay, that the value of a good is determined by the amount of labor. Required to produce what that what material or that good. Okay, so this uh, interpretation was put forward by Adam Smith, by Adam Smith, Adam Smith. Okay, by David Ricardo. Okay, and also Karl Marx. Okay, Karl Marx, M A R X. Okay, so these are these were the people that put forward the, put forward the labor theory of value. We said that the value of a good is determined by the amount of labor required to produce to produce what that material. Okay, so now also we also have another theory of what theory of value, another interpretation of the theory of value, and in this case it's called the subjective theory of value. Subjective. Subjective, okay. This one is saying this one number two now is subjective theory of value. Okay, now this one is this one is telling that telling us that value is based on individual preference. Okay, so it is what we say is valuable that is valuable. All right. So for example, now look at money. 
Money is very valuable. Why is it very valuable? Everybody's looking for that. Everybody's looking for money. All right? Everybody's looking for money. So money becomes of automatically valuable. Imagine that if, if everybody in the world comes together now and say that, in fact, we don't want to be seeing that all this rubbish paper money as money. You want to be seeing this thing as money. This thing will become very valuable. This marker I see in my hand will be automatically become the most valuable thing in the world. Okay? So, subjective theory of value is telling us that value, that value uh, is based, subjective theory is value is based on individual preferences. Preferences. Okay? All right? Preferences and usefulness. By use, usefulness, that is what utility. Because utility is what amount of satisfaction that you derive, okay, from consuming, okay, or from using what a particular product or service, okay. So value is based on what on individual preferences and usefulness. By usefulness, we mean utility, okay, of what of a good, okay? So this is the subjective theory of value. Subjective, when you say something is subjective, it's your own word, preference, okay? So value is based on what? Individual preferences, okay? And usefulness, how useful, okay? A good is, okay? So if a good is useful, it has what value. If it's not useful, it does not have value. Depending on how useful is it, it is. That is how you profile what that value or what on it. Okay, this one is what the subjective theory of value, and this one was put forward by Karl Menger, Karl Menger, okay, and Givens, okay, William Givens, okay, William Givens, okay. So this one, this subjective theory of value was put forward by Karl Menger. And William Jevons. Okay, so apart from this, also we also have another one we call the cost of production theory of value material. This is another interpretation. We don't look at four, and then we are we are done. We we'll move towards the last last part of the class. Okay, so number three, number three is cost of production theory. Of value, okay, okay. This one is telling that that what that the that the theory of what of a particular good, okay, depends on the total costs that is used to produce it. Total cost of material, both labor, both material, and F, and both bullet that is used to produce that material. That's why it's called the cost of production theory of value. Okay, what it costs to produce that material. Okay, so cost of production theory of value say that the value. The value of a good depends on the total cost of its production. By total cost of its production, we mean the labor that is used to what produce it, labor, materials that are used, and the capital. That is used to work to produce that material. Okay, so this one is the cost of production theory of value. Say that the value of a good depends on the total cost, total, total cost of its production. Okay, the labor, the materials, and the capital. And then we we'll look at the final theory, which is what the marginal, the marginal utility theory, the marginal utility theory. Okay, number four, which is the last one, the marginal. Utility theory. This one says that value is determined by 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 the satisfaction you are getting from 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 get from 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 using or consuming additional units of a good. Okay, that value is determined or dependent on the the satisfaction you derive from what from using or from consuming an additional unit. Okay, of a good or service. Okay, you know what marginal utility is now, right? The extra satisfaction, the additional satisfaction that you derive from consumption of one more unit, okay? As you are adding more units, okay? That satisfaction that you are deriving, that is marginal utility. So now, the marginal utility theory is telling us that what? The value is determined by the additional satisfaction a consumer gets 
from consuming one more unit, one more unit, one more unit. Okay, this one is the marginal utility theory of value. It tells you that value is determined by the additional satisfaction a consumer gets from consuming one more unit, from consuming one more unit, an additional what unit. Okay, so these are the various inter interpretations that I looked at the labor, okay, marginal utility, the cost, okay, and so on and so forth. So now, the water diamond paradox or the theory of value, okay, also have for some assertions, okay, that are explained by the theory of scarcity and the theory of what, or of the law of what diminishing marginal utility, okay? It has some assertions that are explained by two theories, theory of scarcity, and the other one is what, law of what diminishing marginal utility. So let's just quickly look at what the theory of scarcity is telling us. Okay, you know, when something is scarce, generally it becomes valuable, right? Like, for example, imagine there's a time now, tomato was very expensive in the market. You are not seeing tomatoes anywhere. So anywhere you see it, you, you want to buy it. And tomato is very important to your cooking. You want to cook stew, you want to cook jollof, you want to cook whatever you want to cook, you may need tomatoes. You want to fry eggs, you need tomatoes. So, and tomato became very scarce. So because of that, if you may see somebody selling one seed of tomato for 30 naira or for 15 naira, and say, ah, one seed of tomato, okay, but you see, buy it because I have no choice. So the theory of scarcity. So number one, say this means that what that diamond, explaining the water uh, diamond paradox, that diamond is scarce. Diamond that water ocean is more scarce. It's not diamond. Diamond is more scarce than water. Than water. So that's why diamond is more valuable. Okay, this means that diamond is scarce relative to what to to demand for it. Unlike water. Which is not scarce relative to demand or what for it. Hence, people are willing to pay a higher price for diamond than water. Okay? People are willing to pay a higher price for diamond than water because of what scarcity. Diamond is scarce. Not your diamond is not something you just see anywhere. Okay? So now, another one is uh, the door of diminishing marginal utility. From the from diminishing marginal utility, diamond is not subject to the law of diminishing marginal utility. Okay, it's not subject to it. That is, consuming more of diamond does not diminish the marginal utility derived from what from it. Okay, let's say you have one diamond. Then the next day, God bless you, get another diamond. Okay, the next time again, God bless you, you are getting diamond, even though you are getting diamond, it one, one diamond from beginning of the year to the end of the year, okay? The satisfaction you are getting from getting those diamonds is constant, okay? So it is not subject to the law of diminishing marginal utility. Unlike water, okay? Unlike water, in which successive consumption diminishes its marginal utility, okay? So as you drink one cup of water, all right, you drink the second one, and from the third and fourth one, you already were getting what less satisfied, okay? So that is what, the assertions from what uh, that we can draw from what from the water diamond word paradox. Okay, so please ensure you download the Otri Schools Jam CBT practice app and activate it for your own good. If you want to pass your exam at once, I trust myself, I trust you to succeed. Okay, use the app, use all of its features. As you can see, the features being displayed on your screen right now. All right, there are a lot of the, all the past questions are on the application. Okay, aside from the past question, there's a classroom, there's lecture notes, and a study plan. You can create a study plan that works for you. Okay, then likewise, there's a mock challenge on the app every Saturday. Download the application, participate in the mock exam, use the classroom, smash past questions, go to jam or destroy the computer by mass mercilessly answering all the questions, chewing them, and then of course come out successful and come and give your testimony. You will say I say so. My name is Owola Bitangod, aka Master T. In the next class, we'll look at what the theory of what of uh, uh, the theory of what consumer surplus okay so please ensure what you want to join us and ensure what you keep learning with us thank you for joining see you there